this is Stacia, and I wanted to share a game that I played on chess.com. This was a 15 minute, 10 second increment game, so rapid time control. Played against uh, Louis1970, and I was rated 1561 for this particular game. Now, I played the white pieces, and I opened with the move e4. And bear with me, I'm trying to use. Um, chess.com to do this analysis and um, my opponent played e5 so we have a double king pawn and here I played f4 which is the king's gambit and now um, black has some different ways to play here they can accept the gambit or not and my opponent did choose to accept with the move e takes f4 and now I played um, knight f3. Just looking to stop this check on h4 and also um, develop my king side so that maybe I can castle like that. Okay. And now again, black has a lot of choices. Um, the main move is actually g5, which I don't see that often <laughs> at my level. Um, just saying, hey, I'm going to hold on to my pawn. <laughs> There's also d5, which I do see more. Um, that's the modern. There's d6, which is the Fisher defense. And I actually did see the fourth most common move in this particular game, which is bishop e7, the Cunningham defense. So this was played. And I'm not all that familiar with this opening, so, um, but I did recently look at a line you can play against this in John Shaw's uh, King's Gambit book. And um, it's crazy. <laughs> so that's why I wanted to show this game because, well, I want to learn about it, first of all. <laughs> and you guys might know more than me. And, um, but also, um, I think it's a pretty fun variation to show. So with Bishop E7, Black is kind of saying, hey, you stopped my queen from checking, but I now I can check. And if you take with the knight, I'm still going to check with the queen on h4. And your king is going to be uncomfortable. So, okay. Against this, the main move is actually bishop c4, which I did play in the game. So, allowing this check. Um, other moves are knight c3 and bishop e2. Even d4 is a move. But really, bishop c4 appears to be the main line. So after this move, my opponent did check. Now, to my surprise, the main move is actually knight f6, and then e5 is played, and the knight comes to g4, and that's the way this normally goes. Um, but my opponent, of course, checked, because, well, why play bishop b7 if you're not going to do it? <laughs> I guess it makes sense to just develop, though, too. Um, and okay, um, I can choose between king f1 and the crazy move g3, which looks like it shouldn't even be possible. But this is in fact what I played. And now he takes with a pawn with a huge threat, right? He's threatening check, winning the rook. Um, but I play castle kingside here. Yeah, and I have seen this line. It's called the Burton Gambit. And um, surprisingly, white gets a lot of play. So now um, black can actually choose to take this pawn with check. I don't really see another move that makes sense. Perhaps uh, computer's giving knight h6 and d5. Um, but yeah, this is totally fine. And he did play it in the game. And now I played king h1. And I will check the opening book. Yeah, it's basically the only move played. Wow, so only four games have gone this way <laughs> in the, the chess.com master database. Which I expected more, but this this is the exact position that I looked at in the book. So okay, um, let's stop for a second. What is going on here? 
So White is basically saying, yes, you've won some material. I believe Black has won two pawns. Let's see. Black has eight pawns and we have five. So, so actually Black is three pawns up and they have a pawn advanced to the second rank, which, you know, if my queen ever, or if my king is ever forced out of the way, this could be a threat to become a queen. For now, I have really good control. Um, but white does have really awesome development, you know, so the knight's out, the bishop's out, the rook is on an excellent file, the queen has scope, um, you know, and just one move like d4 and the bishop's coming out too. And so this is kind of crazy. F7 is especially tender. Notice that, you know, there's coordination on the F7 square right away. And um, black doesn't really have easy development. Their pawns really aren't moved. I mean, if you look at, at black's moves, they're not catered towards development at all. So grabbing a pawn... Okay, they develop their bishop, but after that, they move their bishop a second time. Now they capture a pawn. Now they capture a pawn. You know, and so basically black has not, um, has fallen way behind in development. And white is gambiting these three pawns. So yeah, very interesting position. Um, and I don't know what black should even play here. I mean, I would definitely want to develop, but this is scary. The stuff on F7 is scary. So maybe a move like D5, giving back a pawn, is necessary with the idea of maybe like Bishop E6. And um, let's go ahead and see what the opening book says. Yeah, it does say D5 with that idea. And probably the computer says it as well. Yeah, after D5, the computer gives 0.7 for black. So let's look at how this might go. I'm assuming takes. Absolutely. Oh, and the computer even likes knight f6. Or I'm sorry, the opening book likes knight f6. And um, okay, interesting position. White well, can actually take and now take here because notice this is blocked by the knight. And the knight is also pinned to the king. Yeah, and I have had blitz games that have gone this way. So this looks very familiar. Okay, but going back to the game. Yeah, my opponent played knight h6, which, as you can see, um, the computer is calling a mistake. And... Well, my opponent's idea was clear. They want to defend f7, but this is pretty much a bad move because I do have the move d4, and then I'm attacking the knight. So d4 looks too natural, and sure enough, that is what I played here. That is the best move. And now they probably should go d5. Instead, they castled. Yeah, I still like d5 here just because you give back a pawn, but at least like you're developing, you know, getting this bishop out. But in the game castles. So black's trying to get their king safe, except this does allow me to basically rip open their king with bishop takes h6. And now that this pawn is moved to the h file. I don't have like rook g1 necessarily, but I do have ideas like queen g4. d5 would stop that though. And there's also ideas like queen h5 at some point. So okay, I think here I thought quite a bit because um, I want I know that these positions are volatile. Volatile is that a word? And um, I, w I need to be accurate. So what I noticed is that, you know, I think taking the, the bishop is just totally out of the question. This just helps black untangle a bit. So I didn't play that move. Um, 
And I was looking at the move knight e5 because it again attacks f7. And um, that is only defended by the king and the rook. So it's defended twice and it will be attacked three times. It also opens up the rook and the queen. So this move looked really appealing and I see now that this is the best move in the position. And now my opponent um, played d5. So this is the best move. Um, giving back the pawn. I mean, I think I could take here uh, right away, but I think that's met by bishop e6. And let's check that. So if I play here, and he plays bishop e6, hmm actually doesn't work. So I can take I do have queen g4 check. Yeah, this might be a, an issue. Very much is an issue, isn't it? Yeah, I can just jump into f7 because I own this square. And this is going to win an exchange. Wow, note that I have this. I'm still eyeing the bishop. And this is huge. So queen g5 has to be played. Yeah, so I'm material up and black has to trade queens. So very interesting. Um, I didn't see all that during the game, to be honest. Um, I just didn't want to allow... Uh, bishop to e6, but it turns out I could allow that. That's still winning. Um, so instead of taking right away, I decided to take on f7 first. So um, that is what I did, right? <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. So this is a good move. I guess taking here is actually even better. Taking on, on d5 because of the variation that I showed. But this looked appealing to me because I felt like if the rook does take, I can take on um, d5, pinning to the queen, or to the king, rather. So, um, so actually for this reason, black shouldn't even take. They should probably just go like queen e7, I guess. You know, threatening stuff. But, um, yeah, I felt like black was in a lot of trouble during the game. And, in fact, the computer verifies that that black is lost <laughs> in this position. So very interesting, right? So, um, okay, um, here they took with the rook. And I took with the bishop. And now this is – the rook can, cannot move, and it's attacked twice. Bishop f6 cannot be played now because the pawn is gone. And I would just take. And sadly, the computer thinks this is the best move. <laughs> so clearly, um, yeah, the game's over. So they played c6. It says that's good. I actually thought that was horrible. But I guess there's no moves for black. Now that I think about it, what can they really do? Yeah, I don't know. There are no moves. King h8? Yeah, I don't know. So after c6, I'll just show how the game ended. I took the rook. They went king h8. And now um, I still felt like I better be precise. But I'm up material. So what to do here? I thought about the move queen f3, which the computer is suggesting. Um, I thought about simple development, like just bring my knight in. But then I saw the idea of, you know, this king really doesn't have any squares. It basically has this and that's it. So if I can get my queen, I don't have a dark square bishop, but if I got my queen on this diagonal, you know, then that would pretty much be mate. They could block, but keep in mind this is 
controlled by the rook. So I played the move d5. <laughs> Computer calls this a mistake. Um, it's still winning, though. Um, it's still plus two. And the computer wants to play knight d7 against this. What's the idea there? Oh, guarding f6. So now they do have this move, right? Yeah. So, okay. I like that defense for black. So I did not I did not see this move. Otherwise, I don't think I'd play d5. But I thought this is a pretty big threat. And... um. I also have this kind of thing too, getting this pawn. So in the game, they played queen e7, but this just allows um, queen d4 check. And now the, the king has nowhere to move at all. So the only move is to block, and this is, this is going to lead to mate. Like I could even take with a rook here. The rook continues to defend the bishop and pretty much, you know, black is, is in huge trouble here. I'll just show the computer line. It wants to sack the queen. <laughs> you know, clearly I'll take that. And uh, bishop g4, <laughs> sacking the bishop. So this is just a computer line because um, well, what is our me? I mean, we're, we're basically just going to go here. I think. Yeah, so I don't know. Like if I just move something, can I just go check? Yeah, it's mate in four. So maybe like something like this and the computer's no help because it just wants to give away all the pieces. But yeah, I, Black's just lost here. Like Bishop B6, like, oh, okay. Well, I'll take that with check, <laughs> you know. <laughs> King H8. Yeah, I could probably just do this, huh? This should be sufficient. So that would be checkmate. So, okay, let's go through the highlights of this game. So we had a King's Gambit accepted Cunningham defense. Turns out bishop c4 is the main move, but checking is not. Knight f6 is instead the best. So that's something I learned. And um, this line, I think I'm going to keep it in my repertoire. I mean, that's part of my um, problem is I wasn't sure if I would, but it's very difficult for black. I just, I like the fact that they are so undeveloped and that there's so much pressure on f7. Um, there's also the surprise factor that I'm considering, which is that, you know, if you're black, you might think, oh, this king's in huge trouble, not realizing that this is an actual line, and um, it's a way to play. So I like my move d4. Yeah, and it basically black just played this incorrectly, trying to castle with their knight on h6. Just doesn't make sense to me at all. Knight e5 was pretty precise. And I also like knight takes f7. Although this line is very interesting to me. I, d I thought this was bad news for me. But we can actually take, take, and how did this go? Check. King h8, and this is possible. Winning an exchange with a huge threat. So I'll definitely be looking for that in future games as well, or things like that. Um, maybe it's just me, but I think when there's early tactics and openings, a lot of times they turn out to be thematic, and you will see them again. So I pay, I take special note of uh, of those kinds of tactics. But this is fine enough, just pinning the rook. I mean, the rook is pinned and attacked. The only thing that can defend it is the queen. Or the bishop, which would just be taken. So this was just already over now. And it was in this position that my opponent resigned. So 
Um, yeah, nice game for me, I guess, a pleasant game. I might be showing this to like boost my confidence a little bit because I have been on a um, very bad path lately in terms of results. Um, but I feel like I know more and... You know, I have ventured into new waters this year, going into all new openings and playing attacking chess as opposed to my old positional nature with the idea to grow as a player. So I am enjoying this whole process and um, I do intend to um, get my rating up in time. Uh, but just like in chess, I'm prepared to be patient and just go one move at a time and one game at a time. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.